Okay, winding up our uh, morning session in our Sprint Cup Series drivers is Kevin Harvick, and he drives the number 29 Realtree Bad Boy Buggies Chevrolet for uh, Richard Childress Racing. And I must say, that's uh, I like that uh, fire suit and that hat. I'm going to have to give me one of those. Uh, he's third in points. He's got three wins on the season. Uh, certainly he's had a, uh, a, a very strong uh, regular season. And, and, Kevin, I know you'd like to finish it off with a win here at Bristol and get, also get into that uh, mix for the Sprint Summer Showdown. Yeah, you know, obviously um, everything, everything we're doing right now is, is based upon trying to put yourself in position for the chase. And uh, in order to do that, winning more races would, would help with the bonus points of things. So um, lots going on, um, you know, internally and, and just trying to prepare for um, the chase. Really, that's, that's what it boils down to. And if we could win some more races before the chase starts, that would be, that would be nice. But uh, all in all, it's really about going to Chicago and, and making sure we're ready to go. I will right, we'll take questions now. We'll start here with Lee. Go ahead, Lee. Two questions. Um, first of all, where does RCR need to pick up? Because it's just, you know, the, the performance is there, but it looks like, you know, it, it could be a little bit more. And secondly, when you mentioned the other day that KHI would never have a, a cup operation as long as you were driving, um, a lot of fans were kind of wondering why. I mean, you know, it'd be easy to assume you didn't want the distraction, but in your own words, can you kind of explain, you know, your reasoning? Yeah, I think, you know, as far as RCR is concerned, I think, um, you know, right now we're working on making sure that we, we have the, the pit crew in, in order uh, for the consistency um, on pit road that you're going to need through the last 10 weeks. And, and a lot of that comes with, with the experience of the guys that are, that are doing it. So um, guys have, have done a great job. They've kind of hit a slump over the last few weeks. But, um, you know, we're, we're working on making sure we've got that in order before we, before we get started. And, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, we, we tried some, some new, was a whole new car last week and uh, didn't, didn't really get the results that, that we were looking for. And I think, um, I think that the, that f failure was uh, probably the best thing that's happened all year as we look in, into the end of the season. So it just opened our eyes to a lot of things that, that maybe we needed to uh, take a step back on and, and get back to, to doing the way that we were doing uh, leading up to this point. So... Uh, last week was was uh, was a great week uh, at at RCR as far as uh, making progress on a lot of things. So uh, I think we're we're in, in good shape there. So as far as the the cup the cup question, I mean it's just it's too expensive. I mean it's too expensive to start a team. It's too expensive to you know to to take that that risk and 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 just step up and say okay I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna have to to spend you know ten. $15 million just to get going, and then you're going to have to spend, you know, $10, $15, 20000000 million to, to maintain it a year. That's just uh, that's not a risk that Dwayne and I are willing to take. Let's go over here to Mark Garrow. Mark Garrow, PRN. Kevin, next week looking ahead to Atlanta, how important is it for you guys to have a good run there because you have so many mile-and-a-half racetracks inside the chase so that, you know, how important is it to come out of Atlanta with a where the good feel, confidence in your in your in yourself and your team for those races inside the chase. Well, you always want to run good, and and you know any momentum is is good momentum as long as it's uh, you know headed in the right direction. Um, Atlanta in itself doesn't do anything for us performance wise because it's just so it's so slick and slow so worn out. It's kind of its own beast, um, but any running good anywhere is 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 a good thing, and especially as we get closer to the chase and, and um, I feel I feel good about you know the things that, that we've that we've got going on leading into Chicago you know I, I don't I don't know exactly how much of that will all bleed over into the next few weeks so um, but I feel confident with it's definitely not going to be from a lack of effort uh, from from all the guys internally uh, and the things that, that, that we have going on right now so we'll see other questions for Kevin back over here MikeHembreSpeed.com. Kevin, t talking about KHI, uh, for next year, do you have a pretty solid idea now? How many cars, how many trucks you're going to have, a, sort of your lineup yet, or are you still working on that? Uh, still the same answer as Wednesday. I have no idea. You know, it won't look the same. Uh, it's going to be, there will be some, some major changes, but uh, nothing's changed since Wednesday. Let's get a mic over here to Chad, if we could. 
Lindsay? Chad Lice to Co-USA Today. Um, what's, have you talked to Kyle since uh, Wednesday night, and do you uh, anticipate uh, anything between Sadler and Kyle tonight? First off, I don't have any reason to talk to Kyle. So, I, I mean, that's, you know, I wasn't in, even involved in any portion of, of, of the incident. But uh, second off, hopefully you, you would hope that he went back and watched the race. And, you know, the first thing that happened was he shoved him up the racetrack shoved uh, Sadler up the track and and then he got mad because he, you know Elliot ran in the back of him and then he drove over the front of him and wrecked himself so you know it's just uh, old Kyle I guess showed up last this last week and and uh, you know really really uh, laid into the fact that uh, he was kind of pouting because he was getting his butt whipped I guess Claire keeps running his mouth he might get it whipped again off the track <laughs> Claire follow that up go ahead Claire <laughs> oh, can I which leads to my question. Uh, Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. I've been asking a couple drivers about whether you can win a championship with volatility. Can you win a championship if you're volatile in the truck series and uh, you know, have kind of emotion and then come and straighten it out and be different in the, in the cup series? Um, and uh, I, uh, I asked uh, Jimmy Johnson. He talked about drivers that did it in years past or whatever. And uh, others have said, well, the Bush brothers seem to be able to, to win and be volatile. Can you talk a little bit about that? Can you be volatile kind of emotionally and pull off a championship, or do you have to steal that in your head? I don't think you have to be. I mean, you can, you can handle your problems and, and not be volatile. I mean, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you, you just kind of who you are, I guess, and, and it seems like that kind of stuff just kind of goes with what we do on, on our car. So it's... Um, we're not going to change anything and, and, and just go about our business and, and see where it all falls. So, you know, you don't want to create any extra problems if, if it's necessary, uh, if it's unnecessary. But, you know, necessary, you've got you to gotta handle what you need to handle when it's, when it's time. Um, you can't just let it, let it go and just because it's the last 10 weeks. Mike, question here. Mike Neff, FrontStretch.com. Uh, forgive me for my lack of knowledge about your off-track activities, but you've got Realtree on a car this this week. Do you get a chance to do much hunting and fishing? I don't know if you really enjoy doing that. or I mean, I know being with RC, I know he loves to do that a lot. Do you get the chance to go hunting with him very much? Uh, we've been on a, you know, a few hunts together. Um, it just really boils down to timing. And, you know, we try to go on an elk hunt once a year and, and uh, bird hunt here and there. It just, just really depends on, on the timing. I know that uh, uh, Bill Jordan from, from Realtree has, you know, some bow hunting uh, planned for a lot of us to, to go uh, on our elk hunts this year. So uh, if it all plans out and, and plays out with weather and, and timing, it'll, you know, we'll go. So it just uh, really right now just, just works out to timing. I like to go. But. Question right here from uh, Paul Woody. Go ahead, Paul. There's a mic right there for you. Kevin, would you mind talking just a minute about your sort of unique relationship, business relationship, how you and Delana run your company, how that, oper how that works, uh, her role, your role, the whole deal? Well, um, you know, Delana and I have, have run the company, you know, since it started. So it's just um, she likes to do all the, all the marketing and PR and, and that type of stuff that, that I really – you know, don't really spend a lot of time doing. I, I enjoy the the competition side more than than um, anything else. So um, it's been um, it's, and we've done it for ten years, and and it's worked. I don't really know. <laughs> it just works. <laughs> she does her thing, and I do mine, and and we have good people around us. That's that's really what it boils down to. There's, you know, you can you can you can say that you know the success of the company has come from her and I, but it really hasn't. We just, we just put the right people in the right spots and, and they wind up, you know, doing a good job and, and keeping the wheels turning. There's, there's just, there's too many moving pieces to the whole puzzle for, you know, for two people to, to, to work at. So it's, it's really more about the people than it is about her and I. Any other thing for Kevin? Kevin, thanks for coming in and uh, good luck tomorrow night here at Bristol.